Hey everybody, welcome back to Motion RC Live with James as Alex behind the camera producing the show. And today we got a good one. I got this thing uh, over the weekend, came here and the box was gigantic. We're going to be unboxing the German World War One cruiser, the Scharnhorst, um, it's about 53 inches. It's another uh, good looking good looking ship. And this one we actually uh, have in two different color schemes. So there is a uh, battle ready one, if you will. It's in the traditional grays, but then we got a peacetime color one, which has like yellows and white. It looks beautiful. It's right here. And we're going to bring it in here in a second. Just want to welcome, uh, Tony Gibson, come fly with me RC and Vic. What's going on? Good morning guys. And anyone else out there watching, uh, probably spend about a half an hour on this thing. And, uh, then get it out in the lake as soon as possible uh, when we do it. So let me bring in this boat. So what I've done, if you watch past ones, this box was super tall. If you've seen a picture, I don't know if you have the old pictures ready, Alex, if you could show one. Uh, if you've seen a picture of the Sean Horse, so it was a World War I uh, cruiser that was sunk in 1914, actually, in the Battle of the Falkland Islands, uh, basically at the onset of World War I by, by the British, off the coast, again, the Falkland Islands on the south of south, southern tip of South America. Um, but that was like the flagship. And there was another uh, another ship. Her sister ship was the Gneisena, which was, I saw the name and I'm like, whoo, Sharnhorst is easier. But I think we got that one, uh, Gneisena. And you can see this one. These are pulled right from Wikipedia. So this was a shot of the two ships in the middle um, are the Sharnhorst and the Gneisena. Uh, off the coast there that was like really cool that you know even any of these pictures exist uh at all so it was cool kind of researching her and um now as that's happening i'm gonna bring in this box uh so they don't see it yet here we go let me move my microphone and now i've done what i've done for other boats i cut open the box to show you how it would be in the box um when it's ready there we go and check this out. <laughs> Boom. That is a tall box. So <laughs> this is what it will look like inside the box uh, when you take it out. And um, yeah, we <laughs> got a window in the back here. What's going on, guys? But it is gigantic. Um, I don't know why, you know, the ship in general, maybe somebody would have more knowledge, but, you know, gigantic mass over the top of the stacks. Um, when I saw the box, I was not expecting, I definitely wasn't expecting it to be this big. So now I'm going to slide this over a bit. And then we're going to do what we do with other ones. I am going to try to, oh, I have to cut the top. That's what I got to do. I got to cut more of the tape up top. And then we're going to slide it out in the foam and just get rid of the cardboard entirely. But yeah, when you get this, it's it's so far this this box is as wide as the aircraft carrier box, but definitely the tallest box for one of these I've ever seen. Sorry, I'm away from the microphone for a sec. Let me just cut this off. Not to be what you're gonna be thinking this morning. That. Gonna make sure it's all separated. Here we go. All right, separated. Our stand is on the side here. Cool. Going back around to this side. Now, let's pull that down. Off to the side. Okay. So, we got that accomplished. What's up, Mike Bird? What's going on? Isn't it awesome, Johnny J? It's exactly, it's exactly what I say almost every time now. And I open one of these things. Um, so I, I guess I don't need that piece of foam. I'll take this one put it there just for now. But yeah, can you see it's boxed up really beautifully. Now with this one, it's just a matter of all the rigging and, um, you know, that's done with it. These masks, I would have assumed like when I saw it in the pictures, cause that's the only way I saw it this, this point, the, uh, the pictures on the white background, I just assumed I would have to install the mask myself. You know, they come off to the side to keep the box 
because if they weren't on there, it would be just as high as, uh, you know, any of the other ships we've gotten. But with these mats now, wow. It's awesome. So first thing I'm going to open, though, is the uh, stand. All of our Bancroft, Bancroft warships, Bank warships uh, come with these wooden stands. And I recommend definitely using some CA. I'm not going to do that right now. But um, once you get it out and assembled, uh, they just sort of fit into each other. It comes in four pieces. Just ends in... And fronts, when you fit them in, add a little dab of CA in there just to make sure that if you slide the weight of the ship on top of it and you don't have these CA'd, uh, they could loosen up and then one falls out, your boat falls a little bit. But other than that, all good. Let's see what else, everybody. Nice looking. What is the price? Aquafish? Uh, I think this is in the 1600 range. It's a, uh, it's a beast because look at this. This is coming out of the box. Uh, ready to run. You basically, I mean, I don't even know if for this one we're going to be adding any accessories on it at all. It looks pretty detailed. I mean, just uh, while I put this together, just looking at these ships, like real, real like rope all being used through mixes of metals, like all the railing is going to be metal, painted, wood decking, um, all the details you expect to see on uh, that you have now seen since we've been doing lives and making the videos for them all. Um, absolutely awesome. Yeah, maybe one day you do, though, you know? Different different strokes for different folks. Just imagine the time. That's, and what's great about these ships, too, a lot of the guys are in, you know, as we say with all of them, I mean, it's a mantelpiece. Um, the fact that it could... The fact that it's RC is almost secondary to just the level of detail of it just being an impressive scale model. Sorry, I just gotta try to press this in. I am struggle bussing. Needs to do this very tight fit. I think I got it now. There we go. All right, we got our stand ready to go. Put that off to the side. And now we've got to figure ourselves out of how we're going to <laughs> remove the the foam. Because obviously the concerns are going to be the rigging here. But that's cut up. It looks like they cut the foam. Almost. Is there something right there? We might have to cut the foam out or we come up. Oh, we got to come up and off uh, with that. So I think what I'm going to do is take off the bow and the, the stern parts first. What do you think? Yeah, I think I have to do that. Or, or actually I could cut the tape. I think I can cut the tape right here. And I might be able to take off the middle, the middle foams first. Yeah, look at that. Okay, okay. I might come around there, Alan. And there's rib in there too. Oh, I have the box up top. Then I can see this, but it's sort of. Yeah, this is your transmitter. It should be a transmitter battery. The instructions. There we go. So you just got the one box, and that's taped up top and housed nicely. It wasn't going to fall and break. And that's going to have everything there. So I cut that, cut that. I'm just going to walk around, sorry, for my mic, and I'm cutting the tape here. There we go. And I'm, oh, that's ready to separate. That's not holding any weight. And then... we go so we got the ribbon on there well i'm thinking if i take these off in the middle first because then it won't less apt to fall or does this actually this is going to fit oh okay this i think there's a front and a back front. we're going to stand there 
So then if I remove, so we're cutting the ribbon. These things are, obviously you take it out probably. I guess you'd cut the whole box, even if you were a regular custom, probably do it the way I did it. Cut the box around it would be almost easier than the thought that you're gonna lift this up and out of that box. Uh, they do make the Titanic. Mike Bird, I got the Titanic right up there. We've done the Titanic. The Titanic video we made is actually does really well. <laughs> People love the Titanic, man. Just in general. That movie. Oh, look at the screws on the back there. Cool. Just checking to see if there's anything within that foam. Nope. Keep that down there and this one and look at that so now it's resting on these two and now here's where we got to get i want to get your exacto knife i see tape here cutting through that i see tape up here and then all the tape on the back side and here because now I should be able, oh, and then the tape on the bottom, open like that. Oh, maybe I just go off the front. Yeah, should should just go forward. That must be the way to go. There we go. I'm being very cautious, very cautious. Because you can open, spread this bit so that you don't mess up. I don't know if I can go off the front there like that. It wants to do it. Well, what if we did this? Can I cut this off? Let's do that. Yeah. I'm going to cut this part of the foam off. Because this is where it wants to jam up. I want to make sure we do it right. Oh, you see this? There's a piece of wood in there. Oh. Yeah. Gives it rigidity. So that, look at that. It's like a bamboo stick in the foam. This should there we go one side down all right takes a little finesse and then we got to get to the other side so keep that off the side we're just gonna i'm gonna cut the tape like i did on the last one go up tape is cut please cut it there cut it here here. Take this off again. That works well. And then it goes to the wood. Because these this foam actually goes down into, so it looks like we're gonna get two big big cannons that are gonna go in these these circles. So that's probably in the box. This Is got our piece of wood. Now get this last piece of wood. Right, guys, just staying intently focused here and doing no damage to our beautiful ship. Wow. Cool, man. Cool. Holy moly. This is pretty darn awesome. <laughs> wow.
absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm excited to see how we get in into it. But looking around, now that we got it out, and uh, I can get in the white box in a second here for the uh, but I do see this piece of rigging looks like they locked it here just for now for shipping. So this one will come out. And then this one, I presume, is going to go, just go across to here. I wonder why they didn't. Or it might have fell off in shipping and just went there. But they just sort of slip on. And then there are some spots here. just want to see what's supposed to be taut, maybe. Oh, I'm thinking this is going to need to come back off because there's another one here that's going to go between. So I'm thinking this one off this piece might separate it might come in two halves here to get inside but now actually i'm only seeing tape oh all right trying to describe that is is not as easy uh sorry guys I haven't looked up here in a second let's go through the uh comments i'll open the white box too let's get the transmitter out and the accessories see what's in here but um James, Bancroft may want to consider doing the USS Saratoga that has sunk off the coast of Georgia. Late 1800s battleship. Civil War era, I believe, since I live in Georgia. I got to check that out. I li like anything else. I think I like those old-timey ships. Like, how sick would it be to see, like, um, you know, even the fantasy, like, pirate ships? You know, like, what's the main one I'm thinking of? What's the Pirates of the Caribbean ship? Why am I forgetting Black Pearl. Black Pearl, that's it. Things like that, or even just old-time colonial ships that would have, you know, Revolutionary War days. Those would be great with the sails and everything. Even if you put an RC-powered motor in it just for the sake of it. But then again, I guess you can make it a pretty sweet sailboat, too. All right, we got our Bancroft transmitter. A little different than some of the, the all-gray ones we have, but looks to be you know, similar functionality, but really what do these transmitters do? You're really just throttle and reverse and rudder left and right. That's, that's all you have on these to even worry about. So the, uh, more basic is fine. We got, all right. Then we've got 2,800 battery. We got our, uh, sorry. We got a receiver bind plug, and then we have a charger in here. And we have instructions. And now, oh, okay. I was going to say, I did not see the accessories in there, but that's why we always check our foam. I just noticed that my two cannons are going to be nice and cut into the foam where the uh, stern was. Boom, look at that. And the Bruce, Bruce is talking about the sister ship. Do you yeah, want to uh, give it a shot now? The, what, Ganagana? No, Ganizana. Ganizana. I think that was it. Is that what he said? That's what he's talking about, yeah. What he said, Rick Bruce. The sister ship of the Shornos was the Ganizana, yeah. The pronunciation using our letters pronunciation is Naish, Naishna. Naishna? Because I just watched like YouTube videos, someone said, Good night has like a GH, the, the, uh, the GN sound is a sound as well, but um, G is silent. The G is silent, okay. So, so that makes more sense, like a Sean Horst and Nice Shaw. Nice, did I say it right? Nice, nice, naw, nice, naw. The G is silent, nice, naw. All right, we got it, but there we go. Our cannons were uh, the way in the foam neatly, and these. <laughs> He said, like, think yeah, Nat. Like yeah. Gotcha. Makes sense. Makes sense. Oh, it looks even better with the accessories on. And they just fit in. If you wanted to add glue, but I wouldn't do that because if you want to display them, like something about the cannons, I always like when we do pictures. I sort of like them at 45 degrees for some reason. I don't know. I think it always looks nice when it's sort of like that. Like they were fighting the coast there. Um, all right. I don't know if my stand is, each side is just a little different, I think. Let me just see. But it is pretty light once you, uh, 
you know, once you get it all out of there, it's not heavy by any means. It will get, I think, obviously with these masts, I think I'm going to need, like the Titanic, uh, with the height of these that these create, I'm sure um, I'm going to need more ballast in this than um, some of the other ones. All right, next step is I want to take a look inside um, and see how she looks. So there's two more ribbons, and I can see that the canopy, that's what I, I meant to say, the, uh, these three stacks are look all to be sitting. Everything on this plate seems to be sitting on something, and it's all going to come off from the just this part. So um, that's probably why this one they they recommend uh, loosening up. And then these, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna slide the knot over to make them a little more taut. But we'll do that in a sec. Let me get rid of these ribbons. I'm excited to get this one on the leak. This one look, just looks beautiful. Yeah, fine. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm happy they sent me the peacetime color one just because we have a lot of gray and reds on all of them from the Yamato, the Bismarck. They all have similar, you know, that color scheme. I remember reading about, like, and I haven't seen one yet, but a lot of warships use, like, dazzle paint. They tried, like, many different ways painting wacky lines on them at, at times to try to make them blend uh, and there was one there was another Sean horse from World War II I started research I'm like this doesn't seem like the same ship similar name it was a class of battleships I think was also the name so this is the SMS SMS Sean horse I'm just pulling this ribbon through there we go all right ribbons are off now there, I do see some tape. They've taped down the uh, the canopy as well. Keep it nice and secure. Don't mind that. And they just use like some stronger version of scotch tape, if you will. Clear clear tape. Taking this off. All right, looking up. Tur top is angled so rounds will stroke at an angle and reduce penetration. Nice. I'm glad Rick Rick Bruce is here he found how'd you find uh how'd you find the stream do you have any other uh rc boats anyone out there anyone out there watching have you grabbed a uh anyone else got a bancroft warship at this point because we've definitely been moving a good amount of them a lot of people like them they are a niche like helicopters or anything else they are absolutely awesome and i'm always stunned just to see them I'm like so happy that I'm lucky to. I'm like most people, I probably wouldn't come across this in everyday life. Right, I'm going to spin this around so I can get the tape off the other two, the other side without mess. Moving my mic a sec. Go. Off. Just a level of detail. Some more like the light spotlights here. Wow. Move my mic back to the front. Another piece of tape here. And I just want to see if anything moves once I get this tape off. So let's see. All right. I think all the tape is done. I just want to see. Because these are halfway. I'm just trying to like lift to see if anything lifts. I got the tape off, but I'm noticing these two like rescue boats with like are these like steam powered motor boats? Um, they're half off the lip, so like I don't know if they're part of what is actually holding it. Yeah, look at that, okay. So the fronts of these boats are on the part that doesn't come away. So half of these come off. So just be careful with that. And it's magnet driven, because I could feel that, you know, that's what's keeping it on there nice and tight. But I'm gonna remove this one, this rigging, and I'm just gonna place it up there. And it fell down, but it's right here. This is <laughs> fat fingers and these boats. Don't mix but actually this one we can keep 
between. Yeah, you want to put that between there. I'm just going to put that back up. Stay. Stay. Okay. I think I'm ready. There it is. Okay. Magnet. Magnet. Oh. Uh, uh. Got some weight. This has some weight to it for sure. But oh, sorry, Alex. <laughs> there it is. With the cranes, different size lifeboats. Pretty cool on there. And two, four gigantic, ma pretty big magnets. What are they called? Neo Neodym? Neod I always forget the name. Probably a, whatever those strong magnets you could get at Home Depot. Actually, six magnets. One for each side, and that fits perfectly. So this looks like your only access. So if you wanted to get, oh yeah, if you want to get at the servo to the rudder, it's right here. Super easy if you ever had to replace that. You can get in, and then this one would be your easiest way to get ballast, and, and ballast to both sides. Uh, you're coming in right through here. So as I've suggested in the way I've been doing these because I don't want to make permanent ballast um, inside the boat. So a lot of guys will pour like BBs or weights in the boat, glue it in, leave it, set it, and forget it. I just use bags. I, I make a bunch of one pound bags with, uh, you know, Ziploc bags and BBs because BBs are just, they're just pretty heavy for um, their volume and they can sort of spread around in the bags and place them in there while you have it in the water. I've made a video about that of how I do it and it's worked. Um, you know, and then I could take those bags out, reuse them for, for other ships. Like most of the ballast in these have been removed and I'll reuse it for, uh, for these ones, but all around pretty cool. Now, Alex, I don't know if we can get inside. I'm going to turn this to show everybody. This is a triple drive, uh, system. So there's three screws on this and they look like three bladed screws. I'm going to keep rotating it with my hands so you guys can get in and see what I'm looking at. It'll be hard to see, but I think up against the wall that's at the bottom of the screen, which would be almost impossible, I think we need a bigger boat, right? Um, the receiver and the ESC are installed on that side of the uh, of the hull wall. No, it's on your side. Oh, it is on my side? Yeah, so oh. There, there oh, there it is. There it is. ESC, receiver, I believe there's an on-off switch right there. Perfect. I made a mistake. That looks good. Now looking around um, also on the, uh, you know, all the, a lot of the turrets right here, like these turrets, they all move independently, which is awesome. So you can get all of these, you know, they have them placed against the wall. I'm not seeing it, so I can't. There it is. Whoop. And there's some white ones that are, I believe, right here. They they move. The ones in the front and the back do not turn, but they are fixed. So it's just these ones that are fixed on here um, that can move. And maybe these these won't move. These and these don't. These are the the man ones on top a lot of firepower for a world war one ship but interesting that all this you know all this masting like back then who would have been up there with all the you know fumes coming out of these things you know to be up there if anything it would have been hot but all this rigging and stuff on top of it just interesting i never saw anything quite like i guess well i guess yeah titanic had it too going across the top just the way they made them back then. Super awesome. What's up, Michael? What's going on? And JCB. But all around, super, super uh, beautiful. As we said, we have the gray and, uh, you know, we have the... Because this one was commissioned, I believe, 1907. And then it was sunk in 1914. And World War One, it was like basically very early on in World War One. this one was gone. So I assumed from what they said, this was the... Uh, um, Oh my god, my the the word is you know, she was the signature, I guess. What do they call it? I'm flagship. forgetting. Flagship. The flagship and like all the uh, you know, the German higher ups at the time 
would use this to travel like this one to travel i'd read through like east asia where they were doing stuff so this is where like rich of the rich would have been on this one you know uh and i guess this is how it would have been painted up until um you know world war one started and then they would have changed colors and got it ready for you know for action if you will um but all around absolutely beautiful let me put this back Let's see how easy the canopy goes. So I see why you'd want to potentially have this uh, this rigging is very easily unconnected. So I'm going to put this right up here. And it falls right down there. I'm going to have that one right there. I can grab it in a sec. But without that one, then it's nice. you got more room to just get that in, slot it in. Man, magnets suck that right down. And then placing the rigging back across you just do it one at a time so obviously this is where you know if you're going to be when you go to take it out so like like we do like i put it on the bench i get the battery in there i plug it in i turn you know my transmit will be turned on at this point then you're putting this back on and then you get all the rigging ready to go so like there's so now this rigging is going to keep it's just going to finish off the uh Finish off the look, if you will. Oh, that was doing t-shirt. So the black, and again, when we do ballast on it too, while I'm putting on the rigging, uh, the plimsoll line I was reading about trying to learn my uh, naval tongue, but that's what the uh, the black the black line between the red and the white that was you know invented so that ships didn't overload themselves. Anything you don't want the water line to be above that black line so that's when i ballast it i try to have the water line right around where the red meets that black line you know when it goes in there now as far as this, i believe these yeah so these can i move these not hmm. i'm gonna have to figure out how to make or maybe they weren't as taut or they would be but i'm gonna see how to talk these are like weights on them i believe so there's got to be a way to yeah so this is like some of them can just slide yeah there you go so like that one slid and i can put a dab of glue just to keep that taut and then like these look like they have a dab of glue on them already but i believe i should be able to slide the there but i'm not gonna futz with it live um i don't want to embarrass myself and make a mistake um, but also most, most of it be shortwave dipole antenna, except the rigging for support and strength. Gotcha. So that would have been, so this would have been more, yeah, the antennas and such, but who would have want to been up there? Cool. But yeah, everything else, uh, as far as, you know, installation goes, like I said, not much. It's a 2S 2800 battery and there was nothing to put on. Didn't even have to put any guns, no screws for this one that you have to, have to uh, manipulate like the Missouri had a few screws that you know to keep the dock on and the Titanic but um this one doesn't need it so I'm excited to ballast this in the in the bathtub and try to get it out to the lake ASAP so we can show you how beautiful she sails so guys you have any questions um while we're here because if not then we're gonna get on with our uh the cameraman with our day spin it right at me Look. an angle oh straight yeah, straight on. Dead on oh yeah yeah right there Boom. There we go. Alex wants to see it dead on. It's gorgeous. I forget what's here. I think this is, oh, it's 1 100 scale. So obviously, you know, the Missouri behind it is 1 200 scale. So, you know, this thing would have paled in comparison at the time, probably humongous. But compared to what was to come, you know, with some behind. Um, obviously, it would have been a lot smaller than it looks. You, know, you can just see by the the lifeboats on the Missouri versus this. Half the size. Need a bigger tub? No, this fits perfectly, man. This will be perfect. Normal bathtub, you're all good to do these. Even the aircraft carrier fits in a normal bathtub. But with that one, you just fill the water. You want to have to fill it to the brim. But this is really, really nice. I mean, just look at the detail on it. 
and it's painted beautifully like even just the sharp lines of the yellow meeting the white you know the rings on the light bulb yeah right isn't that awesome yeah, it's like real wood on the lifeboats, all real wood along the decking. Um, but then, like, all this is like metal, like, all the railings is like metal. So, if something were to bend on here, um, you can easily just take a little, you know, pair of, pair of pliers or tweezers and you can straighten them out, um, you know, if they were to bend. Because, like, this is very, like, if you come down to where my hand is, like, you see, it's fragile. You know, it's thin metal. But now I don't think the mass are metal. The mass plastic. That's really firm on there. They did a great job of getting that nice and taut. And just how they box it up. I mean, that's almost just as impressive as the boat itself. I mean, you saw the way it came. Like, even if it fell over, even if the box fell over or anything, it would have been hard to damage. You know, the rigid foam. And I love, like, all that foam, too. They added... You know, they added the wood through it, like the wood uh, wood skewers, if you will, just to give it even more rigidity, which was great. I can spin it back? All right. Spinning her back. But beautiful looking ship. That would have been cool to see. And I think they found the wreckage in 2019. It was only in a thousand feet of a uh, thousand feet of water. It sank in. I don't even know how high. I wonder how high that would have been they want to see the in real life. They want to see the screws. Let's get the screws. For sure. I'm just going to pick her up. And I'm going to raise her up for you. Can you swap cameras and I will fit it in the frame. Good, sir. There you go. Nice big old rudder. Good? Yeah. Beautiful. Show the screws. Just completely painted underneath. And then again, obviously, you wanted to add lights. You want to add other things. You know, that receiver in there has some extra channels and the transmitter they give you. Um, has some channels so uh, you can you know you can add to it if you wanted to uh, something like that and and then look for yourself for some 100 scale sailors you know I don't know I don't know what the German sailors would have wore back in World War one but I'm sure easily find outable if you will researchable but all around, super cool, man. I'm excited to get it out. So, guys, uh, any more questions? I'll give it about a minute here. But if not, as I said, we're going to uh, go off with the live now. For tomorrow, Wesley is going to come live. He's got the Black Horse Feisler Storch. He's going to be unboxing. Um, awesome model, gigantic uh, high wing cub, obviously, or cub looking, if you will. Um, he had one when he uh, prior to working here. And uh, now it's like got a V2, so it's got some upgrades in it. And he's going to pull that out of the box tomorrow, which is awesome. And maybe he'll show progress that he made on his last unboxing, which was the Dauntless. Because they're getting ready to maiden that one as well. Um, yeah, and then next Friday, we're back with our regular live show. So the, the normal live show, first of the month. It should be August. I believe it's going to be August uh, by next Friday. So uh, we'll hit you up with uh, our regular live show at that point. But we may have another thing to go live with even before that uh from this neck of the woods but all around guys um thank you so much for watching stay tuned to motion rc you know hit the subscribe button if you're interested in these boats because eventually at some point next week we hope to have this video done to be showing it to you so if we can hopefully get out on the lake tomorrow uh or thursday or friday um depending on how choppy the lake is i don't want to have this when it's too choppy out there but um We'll get it out there and try to get that video to you as soon as possible. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, man, these Bancroft ships are absolutely awesome, as is a lot of the stuff at MotionRCShip.com. So go check it out, guys. Thank you all so much. As I said, uh, please hit the like button. It always helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. And we'll see you next time at MotionRC. Bye, guys.